Hello, welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates. I'm Andras. Hello, my name is Taylor. Today we're going to discuss or answer a commonly asked question, which is why are binoculars so expensive? And as you can see here on the desk, we have um, binoculars from higher price classes. There is not a binocular, a single binocular below 1,500 euros <laughs> <laughs> exactly. at the moment. So, yeah. And this, these are the binoculars that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, what about, well, let's start with research and development, which is, I think, the basis of every mm -hmm. other point that we'll get, we'll get to. I will still point all our viewers uh, to our blog. I have written a really long article about this topic uh, because I think for majority of people, it's really hard to understand how 8 by 42 binoculars can cost from 60 euros to 3,500 euros. What can be the difference? And this is, I think, a question that a lot of novice users uh, come by because it's like, what should I buy? Should I invest 100 euros or should I invest 2,000 or 3,000 euros? So it's an interesting topic. But when we talk about research and development, first of all, majority of really expensive binoculars, always when, they, when they're introduced, they bring something new with them. Let's say on this table, the last binoculars introduced was the NL Pure, and it brought really a lot of new features to the table. First of all, as you can see on the shape, they changed the position of the prisms, and they achieved, uh, I would say, outstanding field of view, because the field of view on these binoculars is almost 160 meters on uh, 1,000 meters, which is unseen until now. Uh, they also develop a completely new focusing mechanism, a new bridge design and so on. So it comes with a lot of new features uh, on the market when it's introduced. And it's the same here. Let's say the Geoid HDB with their Porgo, per, Porgo uh, it's Perger Poro prism. Again, when they came out, they, were, they re revolutionized the whole market, the whole segment of Razor range yeah, binding. Nobody else makes binoculars shaped like this. No, and yeah. no one else uses the Perger Poro prism. And, and to develop a new type of prism, to develop something new, it costs a lot of money. And a lot of man hours of the engineers and so on. This is the reason why some binoculars are really expensive because so many R&D costs are in their price. If you buy a binoculars which are, I would say, old fashioned, which use the design which was developed in the 50s or 60s or somewhere there, normally the cost is lower because R&D didn't cost anything. They just produce the same binoculars since ever. But on, on especially in European brands where the R&D is in Europe, this is also a factor you need to count in why the binoculars are so expensive. And then we come to the next segment of why the price is so high and we come to the materials. Right. With topmost devices in the field of binoculars, magnesium is mostly used. And the housing set. Yeah, if we compare magnesium to, I don't know, plastic or, mm -hmm. I don't know, even aluminum, magnesium is a much more expensive material. And, and also much more expensive to work on it. Yeah. It's really, really harder. The same goes for the glass. We have high quality glass. Um, naturally, the better the glass, the better the optics. Mm -hmm. And then with the, uh, with the glass also come the coatings. Yeah. Um, many, I don't know, topmost uh, renowned European manufacturers invested a lot of time, a lot of years in perfecting their optical coatings mm. to provide the best light transmission rate on the market. Yes, yeah, some of them have like 20 different layers in one coating. And for each layer, you need a couple of hours in the machine where all this vapor gets coated on the, on the surface and so on. And, and that all costs a lot of money. And the, the best binoculars out there even have um, coatings on the external parts mm. of the glass. So, for example, I know hydrophobic coatings on... Like Aquadura. Like yeah. Aquadura on Leica. And, or Svarodur. Or Svarodur Kowalski. here. And uh, Lototech, I think, on, yeah. uh, on size. Um, against all the dirt and water and so on. And also against scratches. And the, these coatings protect outer surfaces. A little bit against the, the and elements. here we can also connect this to research and development. Yeah. Again, it takes a lot of time to perfect the coating. What yeah. about the prism type? Well, the prism type is it's really simple. Uh, majority of cheap binoculars use poroprisms, which were 
developed many, many years ago, many decades ago, uh, or Schmidt and Pechan prisms, which are very compact and so on. Even though the amount of the craftsmanship that goes into production of prisms is also very important. So if you want to do a really high quality, here inside it's a Schmidt and Pechan prism, but if you want to make the best Schmidt and Pechan prism, it again costs a lot of money because all the tolerances are really, really tight. But then you have prism types like Abe Koenig on their side, which is really, really expensive to produce. And only a couple of manufacturers do Abe Koenig prisms. Zeiss was normally the most famous one. Doctor was also a very famous one when they still existed. Now it's Noblex. Uh, Swarovski does the SLC. And 56. the Plaza, I think, Primus is also yeah. Abe Koenig. All really expensive binoculars. Yeah. And so Abe Koenig, it's really hard to produce, really expensive to produce. And then we have Perger Poro from Leica. So this is like a special type of Poro prism, yeah. but again, very unique. Very unique and again, very expensive to produce because it's not standardized. Um, okay, and then we come to the features on the binoculars. Yeah, some of the binoculars in the topmost classes come with advanced features, such yeah. as, okay, let's see this Steiner Commander has a compass inside. So again, yeah. really innovative a compass on a binocular. Then some have, like this Leica here, has a integrated laser system. Laser for, range finder, yeah. For measuring distances yeah. up to uh, 2,000 meters, 2,500 meters. And uh, some also have a stab stabilizing function. Yeah. Even though they're quite rare, but... And also very expensive, all of them. All of them. stabilize their image and you're able to use them on a helicopter or on a boat or And if else. we take laser uh, range finding binoculars, there is only, I think, a few manufacturers Two maybe that manufacture binoculars with laser range finder lower than 1,000 price euro yeah. price point. Yeah. Sightmark and Rudolf Optics, I think. And, and then no one else. Yeah, everything yeah. else is 1,500 and, and up and up. Mm -hmm. European naturally 1,800 and up. Yeah. Uh, of course, even Compass is not found on any really really cheap binoculars out there. So, yeah, yeah this this is common features. Uh, laser range finder, Compass, and st stabil stabilizer. To stabilize the image. What about okay. the the labor costs? Yeah, we should this point is, them out as well, right? This is again, if you look at the affordable binoculars, they're always made in China, Philippines, lately also in Burma, maybe in Korea in previous years, and that's it. When you come to the Japanese-made binoculars, they're already more expensive, and when you come to the European-made binoculars, which basically means Austria, Germany, Portugal, uh, Portugal, Czech Republic, mm, Bosnia, yeah, maybe Romania, and that's it. Not many other European countries produce binoculars. Labor force in EU, it's really, really high. This is also the reason why all the American brands already outsource their production. There is not a single producer of binoculars in the US anymore because the labor cost is too high. But when you look at the, especially Germany and Austria, they still produce binoculars from, from plain piece of paper all the way to the final product. And when you look at the labor cost, let's say in Austria for Swarovski, then you understand why this Swarovski costs 3,000 euros. Because the labor costs are so high. They cannot be compared with anything in Asia or anywhere else. Um, and this is the reason why premium binoculars are so expensive. The labor cost is one of them. And there is also another one. If you're producing binoculars or anything else in Europe, you ran into environmental. Yeah. Here in uh, Europe, the regulations regarding the environment are really strict. Yeah. And of course, this brings up the cost when Normally. compared to, uh, I don't know, the countries in Asia, for example. Yeah, developing countries, their legislation for environmental protection is much more loose. Yeah, it's and cheaper because of this, because you don't need to... It's generous, maybe, to say, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Normally, they are developing countries, because let's be honest, in Europe, 200 years ago, 100 years ago, 70 years ago, there were also no environmental laws as strict as they are now. And we know that we had a lot of problems with environment in Europe 60, 70 years ago. In the last couple of years, in the last couple of decades, this changed completely, but also the production cost went... We really rocketed really into the sky. Into yeah. the sky, yeah. This is the reason why now binoculars cost up to 3,000 euros and more. Because when you calculate all of this, European R&D 
the best materials used. You have to understand in, in a binoculars like this, you have rubber, uh, uh, aluminum, magnesium, uh, inner parts from I don't know which metals and so on, special glass coatings with 50 layers and so on. It's, it's ridiculously how expensive this is. When you look at the affordable binoculars, everything is made out of plastic, yeah. simple glass, uh, three layers of coatings and that that's it and no R&D because the the development of the simple affordable binoculars were already done 50 years ago so when you calculate all of these things and features into it's not that unusual anymore when no. you take all of these things in, in the account you start seeing the whole picture yeah and you understand okay now I know why these are so 2,500 euros and yeah. end up there please check our article which goes even deeper into this all topic. the reasons why the binoculars are so expensive and then you will grasp the concept why the best optical instruments on the market have a, such a high price because they're so much also better than those which are really affordable. Naturally with, with I don't know, renowned optics manufacturers you're also buying a piece of history. You know that this yeah. brand is going to last, that it's going to be there to honor the warranty. Yeah, this is, this is Let's say on this Steiner binoculars, you have a 30 years warranty and you know that in 30 years, the service will still exist and they will repair your binoculars. With Swarovski, we are sending them 35 years old binoculars and they are still repairing them. And that's the difference. And they still have all the parts and everything. And when you lose, let's say, uh, um, an eyepiece, no problem. You say, okay, this is the serial number of my binoculars. Even if this is, if the binoculars are already 20 years old, they still have spare parts. And this is the difference between an expensive binoculars and some really affordable ones. Because honestly speaking, when you buy a binoculars for 200 euros, five years onwards, it's impossible to find any spare parts so for it. It's probably just better to buy a new one if yeah. you damage it. Yeah. Okay, I think we covered most of the things. If you have any questions, use the comments below. We will gladly answer. And if you like our channel, please subscribe. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Bye.